hello everyone. My name is Skylar, your host today. Welcome to the online sharing of Judge from Macau Design Award 2021. The first assessment result of the award is already released. This year, we have over 3,600 participations. Around 1,500 amount of them are selected for the second round of the assessment. Participate to log into their account and check the result. Entrants should submit the additional information and finish the treatment for the further assessment. So now let us get back to the sharing of today. Uh, here come to the last design sharing. We are happy to have Mr. Thomas Vilistofa uh, and Ms. Nikki Anderson from Tonic sharing their work and valuable experience with us. So Tonic is a design studio based in Amsterdam. Focus on change, they like to empower their customer with the bold visibility and did many prize winning projects in culture, politics, and government, um, teaming up with the client that reflect their value. So first, before I start, I want to say congratulations to Tonic because they just win the icons and ID identity uh, category in the best building award 2021. Congratulations. And without further ado, let us welcome Mr. Thomas Witterstofer and Ms. Donison to introduce some of their project. Well, yeah, so in, indeed, uh, thank you. So the, indeed, we just won a, a prize with our building and uh, we worked 12 years on it. So I, I would like to share a little bit about the building with, with you all. Uh, let's have a look what I have here. I have here a little bit of uh, maquette. This is the building. So it's uh, totally full of stripes. And it has a staircase on the outside, which is very rare in Amsterdam because we don't have stairs on the outside of buildings. And if I walk out, you can see the stripes and you can see the beautiful uh, morning in Amsterdam. Uh, you can see the staircase. So this is, um, this is a dream come true. We worked 12 years on this project. We were able to get a little plot of land in a very busy street in Amsterdam. Amsterdam is a 17th century plan layout. So it has small streets in the center, but there's one big avenue. And on that avenue, we were able to get a, a plot of land. And uh, after 12 years of planning, uh, we, we were able to, to make it. But it's really funny that I'm a graphic designer, of course, and uh, I'm not an architect. So winning an architect's prize uh, was, it was a huge uh, success for us. And uh, yeah, it's incredible. I always say, when architects put, put letters on buildings, we don't like it very much as graphic designers. We always think more, it could be better. So I had expected uh, architects to say about this building that looks so graphic, more could be better, but uh, they awarded us the prize nonetheless. So we're really happy. And it's a very strange uh, material that we used. Uh, this is actually, the stripes are made of uh, paper. It's a pressed paper uh, material. And it's very sturdy. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's not thick. It's only a, a centimeter thick, but it can last for 50 years outside. It will stay the same quality for 50 years. It's a, it's an old Dutch product or 20 year old, 30 year old product already. So we have a lot of experience with it. Uh, it's called Trespa, and actually this is the only building in the Netherlands, although it's a very very common and known material. This is the only uh, outstanding building that uses the material because I'm a graphic designer and we know this material from wayfinding. Normally we use it in wayfinding a lot because it's so strong and that's why I know the material so well and now it's uh, all over the place. So um, yeah, so this is, this, is, uh, this is it. So inside we, um, um, we have huge windows and the windows, because it's such an icon, we really felt that we should have a, a strong relationship between inside and outside, because the icon, of course, steps into the street, is very visible, and then people should also be able to look in and that it's not a block, not, not a closed block, but that it interacts with its surroundings. So if you stand here, you can see that you can, you can look along the street. Uh, well, that's difficult to see, but um, that, that the windows are huge, you can see. So across, there is a very beautiful modernistic building uh, in, the, in the style of Le Corbusier. So it's not that we're the only icon in the street. Uh, there is another 
really nice, uh, uh, rather modern building with uh, bricks. It's the, it's the opposite of what we do because it's it's bricks. It's more heavy, uh, but it also is a very nice uh, building. And um, yeah, so this is the the what we call the the meeting room. So we have uh, people. We invite people here. We have sharings here. We have debates here. And uh, so it's a sort of uh, open, open uh, atmosphere. And in there you have a, a sort of piece of art by Simone Post, a young designer from Holland, from the Design Academy. And she made uh, materials for, for, um, for Vlisco, which is a, a firm that makes materials for uh, cloth for African markets. And it's made by Dutch designers. It's really beautifully printed. Um, and and here it is. Uh, in this case, we are, we use the same material to make uh, uh, an acoustic wall, because of course acoustics in a modern building are always a huge issue. So we made an acoustic wall. We have another room divider there where where we keep where we keep the storage. It's also made of a special material for acoustics. And all the curtains by a Dutch firm called Vescom are also um, they are also. Uh, acoustic and then on the floor we have carpets and we made them actually in China so when we had an exhibition in 2008 we made the carpets to to show uh, the world our work and um, they were handmade in China Shanghai area of Shanghai and on this one you can see the three crosses and that is the the logo uh, we made for the for the city of Amsterdam so actually everywhere in the, in the building you will find um uh, yeah these carpets here you have a blanket which is uh, again a lot of stripes it's a very beautiful blanket made with a textile museum for an exhibition we did in uh, kyoto uh, in japan um and where do the stripes come from so uh, basically they come from the olympic games in 1968 uh, and designed by lance wyman uh, and if you don't know it yet, look it up on the internet. It's a beautiful project. This was really a project where graphic design was in the middle of society. And uh, it's one of the most inspiring uh, projects we know because it also not only it was in the middle of society, Olympic Games, but it was the first Olympic Games in a third world country. So Mexico did not have the money to put on architecture. Uh, as they normally do in, in Olympic Games. So instead, they, they had a very broad graphic design program with uh, fields, uh, squares, uh, dresses, exhibitions. Uh, everything was in a very strong graphic style with these lines. And the lines came actually from a merging of uh, the New York op art that was in vogue at the time, uh, partly fueled by LSD, by, by uh, drugs. Everybody was making patterns. And uh, so there was a vibrant modern 1968 vibe in New York with, with where patterns really were a part of it. But Lance Wyman also saw these patterns in old Mexican art. So if you look at old Mexican art and, on, and the pyramids they made at the time, uh, then you can also see these lines that there, there, there is a sort of uh, fear of emptiness in all these uh, uh, carvings, all these stone carvings. Uh, so that every part of the of the image is filled with lines to fill it up. So he was able to merge a local uh, tradition, a local visual tradition, with a very modern uh, Western uh, New York, his own tradition, and um, and that combination made it so successful. Successful because of course it's an international event, the Olympic Games, but it also is a local event because it's in Mexico. So if a graphic designer can merge both. Uh, traditions of both cultures, then you really step up uh, to to yeah connecting people. That's actually what we want to connect people with strong visual identities, and that is what Lance Wyman did in the Mexico Olympics. And we inherited this Olympics. I don't know if I have the poster here or where. Uh, actually, because some another designer used it. Oh, so yeah. So we did also this poster. Um, so this is a poster we did for the, for the Museum Boymans from Burning in Rotterdam uh, that was already using the three-lined letter and we just developed it further and, and actually brought it back to the roots of Lance Wyman. We phoned Lance Wyman in New York and said, how, how close do you want us to go to, to this, to your style? 
do, do you mind? Do you like it? And he said, no, I, I like it. I like it a lot. It's a free font, the Maxlent. You can download it and uh, please use it. Of course, we had to redraw it anyway because it was uh, it did not fulfill our purposes completely. So we had to make it sort of next level design with it. Uh, but still, it was really uh, yeah, it was really great to work uh, on on these lines, and that's why we also put it on bigger squares. Um, uh, the, the museum entrance has a big square, so we also used the lines there. And that is why when we were working on the building, it was not so strange for us to, um, to put the lines on it. It was, uh, it, the, the thing with the, with the whole building was actually, is that if you look at the building, um, to make it simple, we, we, uh, we had one size of windows and one size of, uh, one size of windows and one size of, uh, of wall in between and that we repeat all the time. And then we have balconies on the side and then we have the, the staircase on the front. And when we, when we put it in a 3D uh, design, because of course we made it an illustrator as being graphic designers, then we asked an architect to help us, Arjen van Rijven, and uh, he put it in a 3D model. And then we saw that, that actually the stairs are a little bit too small so that they don't pop out enough. And then having worked with lines so often, we immediately knew that lines would, would Bring the balance to all the elements that it would connect the the balconies and the and and the staircase and the rest of the facade. I think uh, that's uh, a lot of talk about my work already. So let's get back to you. Thank you for ensuring, and I really like your work. I did look up the actually in this morning. I look up on the YouTube that you already have like uh, some videos up there, and then sharing about your uh, design. I think it's a really cool idea. And since when you start to have this idea uh, about one uh, about uh, you want to turn a graphic design to a completely building? And how did you start with this idea? Yeah. Well. Um... Basically, we, we, um, the, the housing situation in Amsterdam is uh, very, very difficult and uh, it's a very dense city um, and it's very difficult to, to build here. And the strange thing is that we didn't know this when, uh, when we were uh, looking for a new apartment. We didn't know this. And, and then somehow we just saw amongst all the listings that you get, uh, we saw a little plot of land um, and, um, and we just uh, uh, bought it. So we didn't know that that was the only plot of land that was ever available in years uh, for somebody to build on. <laughs> uh, so it was, it was very fortunate. And we did build on it. We built an orange house. We built it with a very famous architect, MVRDV. They do a lot of projects in China as well. They are good friends. They made the design. And after a year, of, uh, after say 10 years, eight years, we thought, hey, let's do it again because it was such fun. Then we discovered that it was very difficult to find a plot of land and uh, we had to really work, work hard to get it. Uh, and, and that's why we found this one. Now, this one is in a major street and there's a lot of traffic. There's a lot of people. So we really wanted it to communicate the essence of our, of our trade, the essence of design, because we also want to show to the Amsterdam community that if creatives develop their own workspace, then you will get more quality and more diversity in the city. So this is also in that way, a, 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 a building with a mission. We really want to achieve something. We want more people to do this because um, if, you, if you own your own building, you put in so much more love than if you rent somebody else's. And if you just put a building there to make money, you put in less love. So we really think that this, that this building will, will help the city government to, to uh, share the, the, the little space that they still have because the city government still has spaces to give that they will give it to end users in the creative sector. So they develop their own uh, building. So the quality and diversity in the city will grow. And that is also the plea that we did with this prize. In, in architecture, in graphic design, the jury don't, don't meet the graph, the designers, but in architecture, we already had three juries that come here that go that go to every nominated building in a bus all over the country, and uh, it takes uh, for a jury three days to 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 visit all the nominees, and uh, so we had them here, 
and then you can see that that especially this mission really resonates that we stand out in a, in a in a big street that we were able to convince the city government to lease us the property the land to to convince the the aesthetics committee to go for a more vibrant feeling um, and it's very well thought out the building it's very well detailed but yet it is a totally different building from anything that you will see in the netherlands because we're graphic designers because we think differently and that is our plea that if you if you give the opportunity to to creatives from different uh, how would it look if a fashion designer was working with an architect to do this building you know it would look completely different and that would really make the city uh, yeah more uh, give it more quality and make and make it more more diverse thank you so I am wondering, so now you, since you already have some experience in a project like this, would you like in the further move, would you consider to make another project like this or you actually consider to like do other work? Well, so we're, we're now, this is the second building that we uh, developed and it's the first building that we designed. Uh, and we did it of course, together with an architect, Arjen van Rijven. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, of course, we're, we're now also exploring that area and uh, we're working on a, on a tiny house project together with MVRDV and uh, Bart Gildemond, a designer. So we're working on a tiny house project for Trespa because of course we know the manufacturer of Trespa now very well because this is uh, such a um, special building for them. And uh, so, yeah, I think we will develop more into 3D as well, but we but we are still graphic designers. That's what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Main, mainly focused on online communication, of course, at the moment, uh, but also still working in print. Okay, thank you. So since now you're talking about the online work, I actually wondering like, since the uh, coronavirus start, is any difficult parts that you have faced in your life doing a designer? Yes, for us, uh, we, we were doing a lot of projects in China and, um, and, and yeah, we missed that a little bit because we cannot go there. We have to go in quarantine for such a long time to meet everybody. And then you can, yeah, if you don't meet each other, then it's really difficult to keep, to keep the flow going. Um, so we now have the opening of M Plus in Hong Kong. It's a very a huge museum. It's built by Herzog and Maron and we are doing the whole identity. And uh, it's opening on the 11th of November and we cannot go there. So th this is a project for years that we've been working on it. And yeah, we are not there to celebrate the, the results and, the, and to meet everybody. So for us, uh, Corona is in that respect, a, a huge issue. We are back to almost back to normal in Holland at the moment. So the, the sharing of the space that we have here, the, the big space on the top floor, uh, we will start doing that. We, we're doing it more and more now. So we can come together again without the, even without the masks uh, in the present situation in Holland. Um, and so, so here the situation is getting better, but uh, globally we are, yeah, we are really a global uh, studio. Uh, one third of our work came from Asia. And that of course has been less over the last year. And, uh, and we really miss it. We really love going to Asia. We always have a feeling that we step into the future if we go to Asia. And it really inspires us. And um, there is a nice part about that as well, that on the, on the ground floor, we have a Thai chef, a very young Thai chef doing an omakase restaurant. And uh, when, he, uh, when we were negotiating, uh, he said, well, what I really like about the building that you have is that it has an Asian flavor to it. It looks as if it could be in Tokyo or Bangkok. And uh, we thought that was a great, great compliment. So, um, yeah, we really miss the interaction with, with, with other cultures at the moment because that's a very strong drive in our life. Okay, thank you. So now from the sharing part that I noticed that you have many customers from Asia, so, uh, especially from China. I just wondering like uh, between Europe clients and Chinese clients, uh, how you adopt other like different culture as a designer? Well, sometimes we're a little bit lucky. So for instance, um, in Japan, we did a project. We only had one lesson in Japan. And, uh, and from that, we were able to make a campaign in Japanese. So it was a bit lucky, start starters luckiness or something. Uh, but in China, we, uh, we took it a little bit more seriously and we always have Chinese designers in our studio. So at the moment we have a designer from Hong Kong and we have a designer 
from France, but with Chinese roots. Uh, so, and uh, yeah, normally we always have uh, one or two Chinese designers in the studio to help us with the bilingual designs. And for us, it's really important what we do and in, in often do, and we do it, for instance, for the power station of art, we really try to balance the Chinese and the English as equal partners. And with that, we really we want to express a sort of new world order where the East and the West uh, should be in, a, in a, yeah, should develop a new balance. Uh, the, the, the West has been overpowering for the last uh, decades or century. And, uh, and now I'm, I'm really happy that, that there is a balance in power and I hope it, it will stay a balance. Um, and, that, uh, and that is also what we try to express in our typography. Okay, so I think here's the last question that I really want to know. So in, so you are the first year, you're on the first year that doing the Macau Design Award 2021. So what are you expecting to see in the competition? Well, what I did see was that there is a lot of strong um, uh, Chinese designers putting forward designs. And in that, I really like it when there is a sort of a strong presence of, uh, of the Chinese identity or the, of the Asian identity, also in the characters. Uh, but on the other hand, that there is also a sort of language that we can see, uh, that we can understand as a global uh, language. So I think um, uh, again, coming back to what Lance Wyman did in the Olympics in 1968, that he was able to, to make something that, that resonates in the Mexican tradition and that resonates in a global uh, arena. Uh, I think that is what I'm really looking for in the designs uh, from the Macau uh, Design um, Awards, that we're looking for something that resonates on both levels, that it can really, that, that it resonates in, in an Asian context, but it can also resonate in a global context. Okay, I think it's also come to the end. Thank you so much for Mr. Vizdesova. I hope that I pronounce it right. Thank you for yeah. sharing your, uh, your experience with us and time fly. It is already the end of the design uh, sharing of this year, but this is not the end of the year. Uh, this is not the end of the event. More great work are coming. Please continue to place close attention to our award and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, WeChat, and YouTube channel. More information will be public soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.